We are just weeks away now from the 20 year anniversary of 9-11. So joining us this morning to answer all of your questions because there's confusion. And there are still people who are listening to us right now who are unaware that you're probably entitled to free life care for health in every state and compensation from the victim fund. This is why I have brought on my friends, 9-11 community lawyers, Michael Barish of Barish McGarry and one of his partners, Don Penson. So good morning, guys. First of all, are, are your offices now reopened? What's the situation post-COVID? Well, we sometimes disagree, but <laughs> we are, you know, when, May, when the governor announced New York is open for business, I invited everybody to come back four days a week. And for the most part, I think people are delighted to be back, especially those people who are living in small apartments or with little kids and delighted to go to a place where there are adults. But it's so the energy in this office now is so wonderful because people are so happy to be seeing their coworkers, not on Zoom, but in real life. So I mean, we are making exceptions, of course, for people who live an hour and a half away. I mean, Shelley, this is just the new reality. You have to accommodate your staff if you want to attract really good new people and keep the ones that you have. So since we now know that people can work productively from home, even though it's not as good as being in the office, we're giving people some flexibility. And I think it's gonna pay off. I think that's gonna be permanent. Okay, now let's start at the beginning, which is with some numbers. To my knowledge, there are up to 400,000 people. So the size of Tampa St. Pete, that are at risk of 9-11 illnesses. How many have so far signed up for the free health care with the World Trade Center Health Fund? And how many are also signed up with the Victim Fund to get compensation? Because again, 400, up to 400,000 of you could be impacted. So I just want to tweak your question a little bit. Yeah. I believe that the number is 400,000 civilians. There were an additional 100,000 responders. And that'll so a half fire. million, a yes. half million it's close, people. It's a closer to half million people, 100,000 responders, which make up firefighters, police officers, sanitation workers. Let's not forget them. They didn't get any credit for right. the debris removal, and they were critical, but also the construction workers and thank God, the volunteers. So they make up the responder community of about 100,000. Then you've got about 400,000 uh, office workers, of which there were 300,000 office workers, 50,000 or so students and teachers, 25,000 downtown residents, and then about 25,000 commuters who used to come in through the Staten Island landfill, through many of the subways from Brooklyn. So altogether, it's about 500,000. I think you meant to say that there. What did I say? Landfill. Oh, yeah. But the, and I have thank you for that, Dom. There were thousands of people, and we call them responders too, because they were going through the debris at the Staten Island landfill, and that is considered in the exposure zone as well. And then, of course, we have people in the Pentagon and at Shanksville who were responders. So that's your population. Okay. To answer your question now, approximately 120,000 people have enrolled in the free World, Center, World Trade Center health program. Of that number, about 80% of the 100,000 responders, so about 80,000, um, they have enrolled because their unions did a great job educating them about this program. Sadly, though, the other 30,000 or so civilians make, uh, out of the 400,000 is less than 10% of the civilians have enrolled in this free program. And we can discuss this now, but I think Dom, you'd agree with me. They just don't know that they're Ill eligible. They don't. It, the, the, the government um, just doesn't do anything to publicize these benefits, um, not the health benefits and not the compensation benefits. And so it's, it's left right. to us, it's left to the, to the private uh, community to get the word out and to, and to the community itself, the 9-11 community to spread word, the word about these benefits. And Shelly, I give you so much credit because thankfully you're lending a voice 
that's educating these people. So since you got so involved in this, we've had thousands of civilians retain us to get them to enroll them in the health program. And with that, the two programs work hand in hand, even though they were they were created by the same law. There's that ROGA Health and Compensation Act. They created the World Trade Center Health Program and the Victim Compensation Fund. But you need to enroll in both separately. Enrolling in one is not the same as enrolling in the other. So uh, you know, that's a big misconception we hear all the time. And what people have to understand is that while you can do this on your own, Barish McGarry knows the ins and outs. You really need help navigating because if you make a mistake and you don't do it, it's not going to go through. Now, I wanted to mention this. This has been my thing since the Zadroga law was passed, and it's infuriating to me. If you or I owed the IRS money, they would find us in a second. Please don't tell me that the government cannot find the half million people who are at risk. Now, Barish McGarry is a proud sponsor of 9-11 Stories, my podcast and YouTube stories from everyone from that day, from first responders, those who lost loved ones, those who escaped, students, and more. I spoke recently with um, the successor to Congressman Peter King, and uh, he told me, Garbarino, Congressman Garbarino, and I just, well, I just said to him what I said to you, that the government should be finding these half million people at risk. We shouldn't have to connect the dots ourselves. He promised me he would work on that with the, yes, with our, our Senate and congressional delegation from New York and New Jersey who have been so wonderful throughout this process. But as you mentioned, you know, this is a huge problem. It's great to pass the coverage. Oh my God, we're so thankful. But please don't put it on the victims to find out about the programs. They're our government is dropping the ball, which is so angering because it was the government a week after 9-11 that told us the air was safe and everyone went back, including oh, you. Are you going to disagree with her? <laughs> no, I mean, you're, you're hitting it right a nail on the head there. But I have to add one other thing. Yes, the government could do this. They know where we live. They know who got W-2 statements of the 300,000 office workers back on 9-11 during the 2001, 2002, eight months period after 9-11. They know who, they, who the IRS received W-2s from. How hard would it be for them to generate? And probably if they know where everybody has moved to, because the social security numbers haven't stopped or haven't changed. But I want to add one other thing. And this is a call to action. I don't know if you read the article in the Post this week. Um, the corporations. Now, I know a lot of small companies have gone out of business since 9-11. I get it. It was 20 years ago. But many of them, American Express, Merrill Lynch, Prudential, Goldman Sachs, they know who they generated W-2 statements for. They know who their employees were 20 years ago. Why aren't they doing a better job educating their former employees? Well, I think the word former is the reason why they don't do it. What's in it for them? Look, these are wonderful corporations. And I suspect that many of their current employees weren't um, weren't there 20 years ago. So it's not really, a, they don't feel this urge to do it. Right. Let me mention another, mm, another thing that disturbs me. As you know, I am a breast cancer survivor. And so when you go for your treatment, and I went in New York City, um, you, you are asked a, a battery of questions. Um, about your breast cancer, because they're trying to figure out why you have breast cancer, if there is a link. And they don't ask, were you there on 9-11? And they don't ask, 
Very well, sure. you're there sure. in the eight months after. And that's a source of frustration. And it dawned on me that if the medical community as a whole, all over the country, because as you know, people responded from every single state. So this is not a New York, New Jersey issue. If the medical community would jump on board and just, and I have no idea how that happens with the screening questions, but if that question would was asked, it would trigger something in your mind, no. whether you were diagnosed or it was just a scare, you would know, oh my God, that could be the cause. Right, so that's a great point. I, I think, I don't know how that could happen, but I suspect that when you go for your annual exams, uh, or when you were first worried about breast cancer and you had to fill out a questionnaire, wasn't one of the questions, do you have a family history of breast cancer? Right, sure. So why shouldn't, especially in the New York area, why shouldn't one of the questions be, were you working or living south of uh, Canal Street uh, or south of Houston Street, at least would get you into the health program south of Canal Street also gets you compensation. But um, I think your listeners should be reminded, there's a presumption. Right. And Dom, um, I think you should speak to that. No, that I think part of the problem is that the medical community, Shirley, just like the rest of the community, doesn't know about these programs. Uh, doctors don't know that these benefits exist. They don't know that there's a health program for the 9-11 community or that there's a compensation program. And they certainly don't know about these presumptions, which is what Michael's referring to and is so important. Um, doctors are trained uh, to, to ask about your family history, to ask about your smoking, your smoking and other uh, <clears throat> exposure to, but they're not trained to ask, were you below Canal Street? Right. Or were you below Houston Street? That's just not part of the training. Right. And they certainly don't know about the presumption, which is that if you have one of the illnesses, the 68 cancers, the pulmonary diseases, one of the, the illnesses that has been linked, and you were in the exposure zone, that's it. You're entitled to the benefits. Even okay. if you have a family history. Even if you have a family history of, of the particular illness, even if you had other uh, sources of exposure, such as smoking or, or other carcinogenic exposure, you're still, you're entitled to the benefits. That's how it works. And, and doctors don't know it. So when they do diagnose breast cancer, as in your uh, situation, they're not gonna then say, hey, you, did you work in lower Manhattan? They don't even think like that. Right. You know, they go right into, all right, let's cure this patient mode. Well, well and, and I'm grateful for that, obviously. Uh, we'll return in a minute with 9-11 community lawyers, Michael Barish, Barish McGarry, and one of his partners, Dom Penson, Q104.3. My guest this morning, as we near, we're just weeks away from the 20 year anniversary of 9-11. My guest this morning, people who you may need to help you, 9-11 community lawyers, Barish McGarry, Michael Barish is with me and one of his partners, Don Penson. There's been a, a lot of confusion of late about deadlines. So I wanted you two to clarify exactly what's going on with the deadlines. All right, Dom, you want to take this? Sure. Um, so January 29 of this month, two weeks away, January 29, two weeks from today. July. Yep, is a deadline. Yeah, July, not January. Oh, sorry. July 29, 2021, right. two weeks from now, there is a deadline. Uh, the deadline is for anyone who was previously certified with a 9-11 related illness by the World Trade Center Health Program. And remember 68 cancers and many respiratory illnesses have been certified. So if a person was certified by the health program with an illness more than two years prior to January- 20, No, July. July, I keep saying. Prior to July 29, 2021, their opportunity to file a claim either with the health program or the victim compensation fund, right, will, ex will expire. Okay, I just wanna tweak that a little bit, Dom. There's no deadline to register for the health program. So that's important for people to know, that's extent. And by the way, the victim compensation fund has been extended 
till 2090. But just to clarify what Don was saying, if you lost a loved one more than two years ago from any of these 68 cancers or respiratory illnesses, or if you had one of these certified cancers more than two years ago, you must register that claim by July 29th of this year. If it was certified. If and it was after, that, certified. after that, it's gonna be two years from the date of certified illness or two years from the date of death. So what we're really concerned about is so many people are gonna miss this deadline. Look, it's heartbreaking enough, Shelley. I've mentioned this before, not a day goes by without one of our clients dying. And, and Dom and, and our partner, Dana Cohen, they run the family assistance team. So they're dealing with this, these families every single day. Well, it's gonna be more heartbreaking when I, we have to tell people, oh, your husband died more than two years ago. There's nothing we can do. So please, even to so all your listeners, even if you're 100% healthy, even if you, you know, no one in your family has died or gotten a cancer, if you know anybody who lost their spouse more than two years ago, urge them to register a claim. You know, you mentioned before, you don't need to have a lawyer. That, I'm, I'll be the first to admit it. I do believe lawyers make it a little easier to make sure that you don't miss anything. And, you know, we know certain elements of damages that the government is willing to give extra money for that you might not know. But you don't have to hire us. There are other good lawyers, too. But take advantage of these programs. Don't let anyone miss this deadline. And you had started something earlier this year, Michael, that really resonated with me because, you know, we keep saying a half million people are at risk and maybe you were there and maybe you're lucky and maybe you're not sick. But what Michael Barish started was uh, a registration. If you were at the World Trade Center on that day or below Canal Street that day or any part of the eight months after, even if you're still healthy, you need to get affidavits from some witnesses, two witnesses now. Why now? Because you may not be able to find your witnesses when you, when and if you get sick or they could be gone. They could have died. So now is the time to act, even if you're still healthy, and this is something, again, that people don't think of, why would they? Well, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I want to add to that, Shelley, that um, I know this sounds like a bit of a chore for people. If you can get three affidavits, get three affidavits. If you, can, if you were a student, get your school records, get a copy of your school transcript. If you work for a company that you've now retired from, get a letter from that company, if it's still around, or even if it isn't around, but you know where some of the people who used to work at that company are, if you can get a letter from that company confirming that you worked there on 9-11 or during the eight months after 9-11, get that proof now. And one of the main reasons, Michael mentioned that Dana and I, we handle the family assistance team, we run that, we handle all the claims on behalf of families who've lost them. It's so much harder for the family of the people of the, 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 the victims who pass away to get that evidence because they're they're not that person they weren't uh, necessarily in the zone they didn't work at that shop they didn't go to that school so for them to get the information is 10 times as hard so if you want to do something for yourself you want to do something for your family collect it now it's so important. It's 20 years now since 9-11, and it's only getting more and more difficult to get that proof. Right. Companies go out of business every single day, and they won't be able to write an employment verification letter for you. So, you know, God forbid you get cancer in 40 years, 30 years next year. It's harder for us to help you every single year that goes by. So I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point. We've now registered hundreds of office workers, students, residents who are healthy. And we love it when we speak to someone who's healthy. Because um, sadly, you know, as I mentioned earlier, not a day goes by where one of our clients doesn't die. And your law firm has been personally hit by 9-11 illnesses as well. Yes, I mentioned this before, but 
look, I'm very fortunate. I'm a cancer survivor and I, you know, I count my blessings, but uh, Dennis Cotter was 47 years old. He was a wonderful paralegal for our firm. Liana Rivera, 47 years old, died of breast cancer. Dennis died of kidney cancer. We have, um, you know, my secretary, Barbara had lymphoma. Two other of our uh, partners had um, what melanoma yeah. and, and someone else has terrible sinusitis has lost her ability to smell and taste at all. So look, we're still alive, at least Dennis and Liana, sadly, rest in peace or not. But we were only a law firm of 15 people 20 years ago, and half of our people so far have cancer. So that is so scary because you are office workers. So we're talking right. about office workers. Half of your office came down with 9-11 illnesses and two we tragically lost. Right. Well, yeah, we're two blocks from ground zero, but so are hundreds of other thousands of people. We were all exposed to the same toxins as Jimmy Zadroga. And when they did his autopsy, they found ground glass, asbestos, chromium, lead, benzene in his lung tissue. I probably would, I, I would think that we all have some of that in ours as well. Yet, how many office workers, what percentage of those who are in the World Trade Center Health Program are office workers? What percent, 75%, 80% of the, the people who were exposed that day were- No, 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 uh, no, no, uh, who, uh, who but, were but and Right, and the eight months following. And you cited 50%, Shelley, right? 50% of this office has come down with some kind of illness that's related to their exposure. And what percentage of people have registered with the health program? Seven of, of that community. Seven, Seven percent of office workers. So we have not yet been able to reach 93%. And again, why would you connect the dots to your cancer and respiratory illness and your GERD? You know, I mean, right. how That's, many people have GERD? And that was like the first symptom that people right. had. Yeah, breathing that concrete dust that had the pH level of Drano. It's, it's truly unbelievable. And the numbers of people that we have lost since 9-11, of course, we lost 343 with the FDNY on 9-11, but since then, we've lost more than 250 FDNYers to 9-11 illnesses, and God's no, God knows how many are, are still sick. Uh, Shelly, it's not it. even close anymore, but uh, after 20 years, more people have died of 9-11 illnesses since 9-11 than died on 9-11. Wow. How many do you think we have lost to 9-11 illnesses? Oh, well, I, I believe that there are about 5,000 people who have died who have not yet registered. I did that math when I did the 7% and figured that out. Because we know, I mean, we represent over 2,000 people ourselves, and we have about a third of all the death cases in the uh, victim compensation fund. So it's at least 6,000 people um, officially have registered. But I think there are thousands of families out there who don't realize that they're entitled to significant compensation. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I mean, Dom handles the family assistance team. What else is there besides pain and suffering? Uh, um, you know, families can get it if uh, they can get uh, uh, lost income back. If, if somebody's work life uh, was cut short, uh, the family is entitled to restitution for that. The family can get burial expenses back. The family can get something called replacement services. That's for uh, the things that their loved one was doing for them around the house or the household. They can get compensation for that. And all dependents, surviving spouses and dependents are all entitled to a direct award themselves. Tax-free. Tax-free, apart from the money that they, they also get, uh, pain and suffering for their loved one because their, their loved one was their death was caused by, by their 9-11 illness. So the estate gets money for that, and then they get money themselves directly. And then, of course, as I said, also for, for lost income and for replacement services and burial costs. So the government did the wrong thing when they lied about the quality of the air, telling us it was safe, but they did the right thing by creating this free health program and the victim compensation fund. Now it's up to us to get the word out there. And by us, I mean... You, Shelly, are doing your best, I know, but to all your listeners, spread the word.
And by the way, the World Trade Center Health Program, uh, which first responders tell me is the best medical care of their lives, is in all 50 states. You don't have to come to New York City for treatment. Now, another misconception that I hear, oh, I don't want to, yes, I had a 9-11 cancer and I am cancer free now, but I don't want to take away from the first responders, our hero first responders. 